So shooting in log or in a flat profile is the best way to make the most of the equipment that you have. But once we've actually shot it, how do we get it looking good? Have no fear because today I'm going to show you how to quickly color grade log footage in Premiere Pro. Now this method will be similar in all editing softwares, but the naming of stuff might just be slightly different. Now firstly, the reason that we want to shoot in a log format like C-log, S-log or D-log for example, is that we want to capture the most dynamic range possible. This is made possible by muting the colors and flattening the highlights and the shadows. And that's why log footage looks flat as we call it and lacks any sort of contrast or color. Now some brands have an absolutely ridiculously flat image like Blackmagic and then others not so much. So now let's jump into Premiere Pro and look at color grading your log footage. Now before we set up our scopes we just need to grab a bit of footage and drop it into our timeline. Now first and foremost we need to switch to the color workspace. The color workspace gives us access to the Lumetri color panel and also the color scopes. The scopes that we'll be working with are Vectorscope YUV, Histogram and Waveform RGB. So we'll be referencing these to make sure that our image is going to look good on any device. So to start our color grade, we want to come up into the Lumetri color panel and go into the basic correction tab. From here, we're basically just going to work our way down the list. Now we are going to ignore the input LUT. If you do want to add a LUT to your footage, we'll be doing that in the creative tab a little bit later. So if your white balance wasn't set in camera, here you can do some minor adjustments to fix it. I highly recommend though getting it in camera because this doesn't work as well as setting it properly before you record the footage. The next thing we want to do is set our exposure. So this shot is slightly underexposed. So I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. The next thing we want to do is our contrast. So like I said before, log footage lacks contrast and color. So obviously we need to bring that contrast back. So we're going to crank this right up. Sometimes you need a lot, sometimes you don't need as much. For this shot, I'm going to bring it at around say 75. Now also the cool thing about this is if you pull it all the way to the right, it does stop at 100. But if you input manually, you can actually set it all the way to 150. So if you need a little bit extra contrast, you can do that as well. So we're going to set ours to 75. That looks pretty good. So highlights basically tries to recover some of the detail in the highlights. So we're going to bring this down just a little bit. Now with the shadows, we basically just want to bring it up until we can see the detail that we want. So there's some detail in these rocks here. So I want to kind of bring this up just so I can see a little bit. I don't want to go too far like this because then again, it just brings back to that flat profile. So just bring it up a little bit just so we bring some of that detail back. And the next two whites and blacks, this is where we need the scopes for. So we head over to the histogram. We can see there's some numbers at the top and the bottom. Basically what these mean is one means that it's pure white and zero means that it's pure black. And what we want in our image is we want there to be a pure white, so a one and a pure black, so a zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab these the white and the blacks and we're going to basically push this up till there is a pure white. So we can see this one is about one in the reds. And then we want to come out down to our blacks as well and bring this down until we got a black. We can also reference the waveform here and see that there's a zero. That means that that is pure black. So we bring this right down. We can see that we're going below the black, which means that that's just detail loss. So we want to try to keep it above the black, above the line of zero, but very, very close. And then again with the whites, we want to make sure that we're just below it or maybe just clipping just slightly. So as you can see, that's looking a lot better now. We're getting a lot more of that contrast back. And then like I said before, there is a lack of color as well. So we want to bring some saturation back into the image as well. So I typically bring it up to about 110 um, and then I do a little bit more in the creative tab. So once we've got it looking pretty good, which this is looking pretty good, we'll come down to the creative tab. And now this is where you can apply a LUT if you really want to. So a LUT that I use is this M31 log. And first up, it's gonna look absolutely terrible and that is because the intensity is at 100%. So typically we don't use LUTs at 100%. So we're gonna bring this down to say 50 and just see what this is doing. So this LUT basically makes it a teal orange look. I also have a Rec 709 that I can try, which might look a little bit better. That seems to be working a bit better. Basically just adding a little bit more warmth and a little bit or more teal to the uh, to the blue. So I'm actually going to leave this off because I'm not li liking the look of it. Now these are a few more adjustments that I like to play with. I always add a little bit of sharpening because the cinema cameras that I use typically don't shoot very sharp. So I need to sharpen those up. I typically set it to around 50 for what I shoot. Then I also allow my images to be quite vibrant and colorful as well. So I typically bring my vibrance up to about 50 as well. So 
we can just chuck this on and off and just see what this is doing. So you can see it's just sharpening the image up a little bit and adding a little bit more color to the image. Now why I add a lot more vibrance rather than saturation is vibrance looks at all your colors and it basically tries to level it. So if there's a lot of saturation, say, in these greens at the front, it's going to leave those alone and bring up everything else, trying to even out those colors. And then after I've done this as well, I like to go back to the basic correction, just kind of make a few more adjustments. So I feel like this can be a little bit brighter. And I'm also noticing there's a bit of pink here as well. So I'm going to do that by adding in a little bit more green. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of orange as well. So kind of look at this. We can see the before and after. And that is actually looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab another clip. And I'm going to bring it in and just see what it's kind of looking like on another clip. So if we go into the effects, we can grab the Lumetri color effect, copy this and paste it onto another clip. So let's quickly trim this clip. And that's actually looking pretty good as well. That horizon is terrible, by the way, but that is actually looking pretty good. So uh, I can probably bring the highlights back a little bit more on this one, just because uh, they're peaking a little bit more. Again, reference our Lumetri scopes and just kind of see. So as we can see down here, there's a lot of um, a clipping in the blacks. And as we can see on the waveform thing, there's a lot below the black. So we want to grab the blacks and bring this back up just so we're not getting some, uh, some wild clipping down there because it starts looking kind of weird. We can probably also bring up the shadows a little bit on this one. Bring this blacks down a little bit more. And just kind of balance it out a little bit. Then should bring these whites up a little bit more as well. We got one more clip here, which is a little bit of a different one. And I'll show you how we do this. So again, we'll copy it over just so we got a base. So we can see that this is overexposed now because we've had to bump up the exposure for the other shots. So let's bring this back to zero. I'm pretty sure this is also a 4K clip as well. Yep. So we're going to set this up. What I'm noticing in this clip is the shadows are still too muted. So we're going to bring them back. Shadows break down. Bring the blacks down a little bit more as well. And again, we're going to reference these two to make sure that we're not clipping too much or also getting some nice blacks. I'm also noticing that uh, the, sh the highlights are kind of a little bit too muted as well. So we're going to bring those highlights back up, bring the whites down a little bit. I was going to bring the white balance back to where it was. It's kind of starting to look a little bit funky. But that is looking pretty good. Now the one scope we haven't touched on is the vector scope. And the reason I said to bring that up is if you have subjects or people in your clips. Now there's a handy little feature in here that allows you to set skin tones and it makes it super easy. So if we get rid of the histogram and the parade, you can see there's this line running through it and that is actually your skin tone line. So what we need to do is we need to basically isolate the skin tone and then look at where the colors are on this line. So how we do that is we go into the effects and we set a mask. So let's zoom in a little bit on Ash's face. And let's just do a mask around Ash's skin. Bam, so we got Ash isolated. And we go back to the scope so we can see that there's a lot of red coming in here. So it's on the red side of the line rather than yellow. We want to kind of be central. So how we fix that is we go into the curves and we come down into this hue versus hue slider. Now what we can do is we can actually use this little eyedropper and we can choose the skin tone color and I'll actually set a little adjustment for us here so we know what color we're kind of affecting. And then from here, we basically just need to grab the little picker watch the vector scope and we basically want to grab this adjustment and bring it so it's closer towards that line so as you can see we're muting some of those reds bringing them more towards the yellow and bring it closer towards that line so now if we toggle this on and off you can see that we're just adding a little more yellow and getting rid of that uh, red and then once you've done that we can basically delete this mask and go back and we can toggle it on and off and you can just see We've just warmed up Asher's skin tone and made them a little bit more nicer, I guess, to look at. And the reason we use a scope for this is that if your monitor isn't calibrated, then your colors might be slightly off. So by using this line, we know that if we get it close to it, we know that on all devices or calibrated or non-calibrated devices, it's going to look pretty good. 
And that is basically my method for color grading log footage. The big mistake that I find people make is they don't add enough contrast and they don't add enough saturation. The image still is quite gray and flat. All right, guys, if you did find this tutorial helpful, then please let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy it, consider liking and subscribing. And as always, stay creative and just be you. See ya. <coughs> let me have a drink. <coughs> don't do that. Vectorscope UI U, Y, U, Z. Uh, the vector scope Y, U, Z. Uh, y, Y, Z. Y, Y, U, V. Jesus.